good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this wonderful, crazy world. Welcome back to the Draw Juice universe. I've got some <clears throat> aggressively juicy content for you today. And <clears throat> good afternoon. Good yes, evening. everything seems to be working. Just let me know if you can hear me see me all that good stuff i'm chris petraki and uh, we're going to do some figure drawing today i'm gonna jaw at you and um give me a shout in the chat let me know where you're from all that good stuff um let me see <clears throat> Before I get started, uh, I have an art community. Uh, it's a Discord server for um, people who really want to learn portraiture or motivate it. And it's a private Discord server. And the link is in the description. If you're interested in that, that would be great. And if you're interested in, in training, um, studying portraiture or studying with me, I have a few courses uh, up on drawjuice.com, so just go over to drawjuice.com. I'm having a sale for Labor Day, and um, it's 20% off all courses and books, so that's going to be at drawjuice.com. All right, so today I want to talk to you about, well, I want to say hi to Thomas over here. Hey Thomas, first time here. Thanks for coming by. That's awesome. Let me know where you're from. Perfect. I always love to have some new viewers. Um, today I'll be doing some figures and I've got a iPad Pro here fired up, Apple Pencil and just some reference that I'm going to have off to the side here and wanted to talk to you about two I think indispensable things one needs to be an artist and um, maybe we'll start with the positive one first which is kind of a, a belief and in a way it's kind of a uh, maybe kind of, kind of a naive belief, but it's very valuable nonetheless. And it's just a, a belief that you can do it. You can make it. Oh, well, Thomas, you're watching from Italy. Oh, that's awesome. My videos have been helping you out lately. Love to hear that. That is so cool. Thanks for tuning in. You know, I'm, I'm Italian too. My dad's Italian. My father, my grandfather was from Lucca, which I visited, and I, that town is surrounded by a wall, so you can walk the whole town in like four hours, which was so cool. And they have something called the Passaggiare later in the afternoon, where kind of the whole community gets out and walks, just walks to see and be seen. So you've got parents with kids and strollers, and you got the old men playing chess and games and things like that people chatting talking walking it's so cool <clears throat> so welcome thomas robert kerr says your portrait courses are is amazing wow learned so much stepped up my game big time also in the middle of the hair course that's been awesome as well yeah i got a hair course hair is really important to making your portraits look believable and it's often very neglected. People don't know how to deal with hair. Let's see. St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, man, that's so cool. Robert, I was over in St. Petersburg. Um, geez, a few months back. I went to go check it out. Um, and uh, it's lovely. It was quite lovely. I was going, I just caught the sunset. 
And so I walked out on the pier and it was really cool to be there. I didn't see as much as I wanted to, but we're we're looking out there to see if there's some place to to maybe move to. So welcome, Robert. Neil, first time watching live from the UK, baby. Okay. Hoping for some inspiration. Well, you know, I need to put on my trusty uh my glove thing. The glove thing. And here it is. Okay. Yeah, so kind of wanted to talk to you about. Um, let me get all dialed in here. Got multiple screens up and stuff, as you can imagine. So, one was that inspiration. One was the belief. The first one was belief. So you kind of have to believe. And as I was saying, it's kind of a, maybe a kind of a naive belief, but it's really powerful because it opens the door, I find. Um, opens the door to that positive kind of feedback and that positive feeling that you need. Um, or that I need and it's kind of mixed with excitement and a sense of uh, I don't know you could say hope maybe enthusiasm um, well why do I say naive um, well I guess It's almost like you have to hope against hope. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but um, despite reality, you have to have a positive frame of mind um, that's going to kind of like keep cheering you on no matter what. And um, it's kind of like your friend, okay? So, you need a friend, and you need someone who's going to, I don't know, give you that feeling that when you want to quit, you're not going to quit. Because art is hard, and anything you can do to kind of give yourself, you know, kind of a leg up, so to speak. Um, and so I think that's super important because I think we do art to kind of like expand ourselves. you know, we kind of do it to connect with the world and to connect with beauty, to be kind of more than we are to, you know, to reach higher. And so everybody wants that, wants to be more than they are, I think. And that's what, uh, you know, the functions of, of religion is for that, is to connect with something higher, right? Even beyond this life here. So this is, you know, these are age old concepts. Um, and every culture has some semblance of that, you know, a kind of system or religion or belief that there's something greater out there. And so it's just part of how we're made, I think. And um, and so that that kind of belief that keeps you going, keeps you motivated, keeps you buoyed up, gives you that sense of excitement to help you overcome inertia. You know, there's plenty of times I don't want to draw, or if I haven't drawn in a while. I feel kind of intimidated, you know, 
to draw or you know drawings might not be coming out how I want them to and so you have to overcome that um, so just just entertain the idea <clears throat> that you can do it and you know you have to want to do it right the want to has to be there and then the door is open so um, you know because I could be in the middle of a drawing and just get really discouraged but if the belief is there, you know, um, and that cheerleader is kind of cheering me on there, you know, it's important to have that before you get going, right? But just that positive frame of mind that says, man, this is going to be so awesome. And then just start drawing, you know, and when it gets tough, that voice is going to kind of carry you through and then don't criticize what you do so much while you're doing it maybe come back to it later and criticize but while you're doing it remain positive like this is the funnest thing you know you've ever done this is the best thing you've ever done and then try to maintain that <clears throat> I find that to be you know a good disposition and um, to maintain and that's I think that goes for anything um, in life is that positive attitude whether it's a relationship any kind of project and um, let me know what you guys think in the chat about that. So hopefully, let me check the chat here. Um, hey, Dan, what's up? I forgot my French. Be right back, switching five minutes to your computer. Okay. Robert, cultivating a positive mental attitude can be the hardest part about being an artist. Comparison can be the third, can be the thief of joy, right? That's a good one. Comparison can be the thief of joy. That's a great statement, Robert. Um, yeah, social media and seeing so many great artists it can be crushing. Whoa. Right. I totally get it. <laughs> I get it. I'm just like you. You know, I've been watching a few videos of some YouTubers, one or two that said they'd stopped social media completely. <clears throat> and so uh, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to, I kind of want to do that just stop because it's so I mean I love it because I learned so much and uh, I like learning you know but there's all this other stuff <laughs> that uh, you know maybe it's just not necessary for me to be just to watch, you know. Um, so. Like I love watching, you know, art tutorials. Um, music stuff um, I used to not be into economics and money but as I got older I started you know 
getting a little more interested in the money stuff, stuff my dad wanted me to be interested in, but I never was. And so, um, so that's kind of captured my attention a little bit. Robert says, you want to get there, but when you get there, it doesn't feel like you thought it would. So it's hard to keep pushing when getting there seems to happen on its own. Yeah. Well, that kind of leads into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is um, <clears throat> tenacity. And tenacity is another one of those I feel indispensable kind of I guess you could say qualities or maybe virtue um, that we need that I need as an artist that tenacity means to like to grip something and hold it firm right so you need to be kind of like gripping something fiercely and not letting go it's like uh, what else? Like uh, being persistent is another way to put it. Um, that that's huge. Now I can I can do a lot of things over and over again. So there is kind of this ability to to do repetitive tasks. Um, and have it not be like drudgery. Okay, that's like a way of putting it that um, I found art has a lot of repetitive tasks, things that take a long time to do, like rendering um, or fixing things, right? And so you just have to sit there and do it over and over again um, and so it becomes like a chore it becomes a little bit like can be like drudgery you know if you're not wired that way right so um, if you can handle doing repetitive tasks over and over be tenacious, not let go, that's good stuff. Um, you know, it's kind of like when I was a kid, I had to mow the lawn and I hated mowing the lawn, um, you know, but it was, I had to do it. And it was like just this big field of green in the front and the back of the house. And had, I had to do that and then trim the, trim the stuff and edge it and all this stuff and so um you know it was like drudgery it was kind of lonely and art is lonely too you know um you have to be able to sit around <laughs> do a bunch of repetitive tasks and be by yourself doing it and so that's another thing is being being able to walk the the high land drones, the high cliff dwelling places by yourself. Um, for long periods of time. And um, 
and be okay kind of with that. And a lot of people are, a lot of people aren't, you know, okay with that. Um, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about tenacity. Um, and this is an extreme story, but it happened to me. So this is not, <laughs> this is not required, but it's, it's just an example. Um, But many years ago, when I was much younger, I was in the hospital for about four months. Um, and uh, actually, I have two stories for you. <clears throat> I was in the hospital for about four months and it was the worst experience um, and I couldn't couldn't eat I was hooked up to um, something they call TPN which is the, how they feed you through these you know liquid type of food stuff and um, and so I had this uh, IV pole and this bags of stuff and then medicine and um, you know the battery that powered the pumps that pumped the medicine that pumped the food and um, okay so you know I was sitting there lonely right so we're talking four months here and just um having to to deal with it how was i to get through this um and i found that i just didn't i just didn't want to die you know i was kind of i was losing weight and um And so, I don't know, I went into survival mode, you know, and I was just persistent. Persistent in that I didn't want to see the end. And so, I kind of just, uh, I took my pumps and my batteries and the IV pole and I would go for walks, you know, so, um, I would find there was a little patch of grass outside the hospital and um, so I said I would just unhook everything the battery had a certain amount of life to it and so you know I'd walk down the halls and escape the white walls the sterile white walls of the hospital go outside find that patch of grass and and sit there and just absorb the sunlight absorb people say hi to people you know um, and get get my get my hope back you know and I had to do that on a daily basis. Um, and then I would exercise in the hallway. You know, I would do stretches. I mean, I wasn't, I couldn't really exercise because I wasn't that strong. But I would stretch. And, you know, I had my pajamas on and hospital whatever and slippers totally look like a fool you know but I didn't care I was trying to survive and so that's kind of like a story about tenacity I know like I said it's kind of an extreme story but 
um, and it's not you know it's not required but it's just an example of you know when you need to dig down and face some things that you don't want to face right could be I don't want to do this artistic chore you know I just feel burnt out I feel frustrated and dejected um, that you can there's levels of strength that you have that you don't know until you're facing these extreme situations you know um, and so um, that's really important stuff you know it's important to know but you don't know until you're faced with it you know so that's the thing about hardship is that it's actually good for us of course we don't want to face you know death <laughs> to learn to learn stuff um, And I had another situation like that. I had two situations like that that just about either killed me or stopped my art career. Um, the other one was that I, I had this condition that took out my left eye for good. So I can't really see out of my left eye. And... When that happened, I was like, wow, this, this is my career's over. And, um, that was it. I just thought there's no way I can overcome this and I have to, I can't face it, you know? And so, um, I kind of felt like, you know, that, like, statue of David, you know, imagine you're in the, um, the Museum of Fine Art in, in, in Florence, wherever the David is, and somebody came in with a, a big hammer and just hammered off a chunk of it, you know. That's how I, I kind of felt that happened to me. And uh, it was like I was this, you know, thing that was marred, was broken. And, um, wow, the, I can't put it into words, you know. That was pretty tough. And so, um, So what I kind of did was just slowly went back to my studio. I wasn't really, uh, you know, I had just rented this studio, a big studio, and I couldn't go in. I was just too intimidated. And so I didn't go in for a while. And eventually I got the courage to show up in the studio and I just opened the door and looked around and then I left and then so I kind of kept kept doing that until eventually I kind of you know I, I would put my drawings out on the floor and just look at them and say, here's what I used to be able to do. Um, you know, I was teaching at the time at a university. And, um, you know, I took leave. Um, so 
So anyway, I looked at what I could do in the past. So I'd line up the drawings on the floor and then just leave. Then I'd come back maybe the next day or another time and, you know, do the same thing. So then finally I was like, I don't know if I can draw. I want to go back and teach, but you know, I don't know if I can do this. So I set up, you know, the drawing stuff, got out my paper, pencil, and then tried to see if I could draw, you know, and I just kept kind of practicing. I drew a little bit and then would leave. And then uh, finally, you know, I felt I could draw, but I didn't know what was going to happen in in the class, right? So there was big anxiety there. But eventually, you know, I was in the classroom and I did a demo in front of the whole class and, you know, I did it. So I kind of, I just never, I don't know. Even though I had all these feelings of, you can't do this, you're going to fail, it's too hard, um, you know, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't give up, wanted to, but I didn't, so I don't know if that helps at all, you guys let me know in the chat, maybe something that happened to you. Um, that really sucked. Everybody's got a story. stories you have <laughs> so having faced those things I mean I still live with you know daily with the fact that I don't have my left eye you know and it bugs me and you know I'm happy I've overcome it that it didn't stop me um, but I always wish that one day the lights would turn back on, you know, and uh, that would be, you know, so helpful. Um, I think it made me a better teacher. It made me more, you know, made me more sympathetic to others. That's for sure. Um, and so these things, they're not you know, they're kind of terrible, but they're not all, all bad. There's these, you know, life lessons in there that we just can't 
get to probably any other way. So this could be the time for us to share our war stories. So I'm thinking of um, the shadow shapes here, just about the drawing. Um, and looking at the relationship of light and dark puzzle pieces and How they relate to one another, how they interlock to form a picture. It's kind of a fun, you know, it's a fun way to draw. It's like a solving these puzzle pieces, solving this, yeah, visual puzzle. So it's kind of like I'm I'm sort of putting on some clay and then I'm cutting into it. Right? So I just put down like a 50% gray there and then I'm using line to kind of hack away and establish something. Right? So the that tone that I just masked in, it's kind of like the ground to work from a work out of or suggest something right so it suggests kind of like um, height and width you know or an area that like something might occupy like the face or the head or the neck and then I can work into that um, and I like that I like the suggestion working suggestively
Um, Robert says, also my apprentice of the last 1.5 years decided to quit with me out of the blue. I feel I failed them. Hmm. So with that, and restarted my career, it's been tough. So who, what, what apprentice did you have? Were you, you were teaching them? Were you teaching them art? Or, uh, I'm sorry to hear that that happened. That sucks. It sucks when people leave, right? I know that feeling. art and tattooing oh man Robert you're a teacher and that's that is um, that's cool and tattooing man I have no idea about that <laughs> I mean I kind of do but it seems that seems like an amazing Oops, what happened here? Amazing art of tattooing. How long were you guys working together? <clears throat> yeah, tattooing, no eraser for sure. Yeah, and you gotta keep going, right? You just gotta keep soldiering on. Um, but that does have the benefit of making us stronger. Nobody likes it, right? But nobody likes change. Nobody likes the process. I mean, you know, rare individuals will welcome and, you know, get off, so to speak, on that process of just jumping in, crashing and burning and, you know, feeling, feeling excited and good about that. Um, I, I think there are people like that.
six or seven years. That's amazing. That's great. Um, so maybe it's, it's kind of time for her to go off on her own. Is, oh, it's like a child, right? Build a relationship and then they've got to do their own thing. At some point. Okay, Robert, thanks for coming by, man. It's been great chatting with you. Yeah, I'm sure you're a great teacher too, Robert. Don't worry. Um, a person, you know, they'll come back if it's meant to come back and just reestablish a relationship. May not be the same, you know, teacher student one, but, you know, it's given the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, thanks for being here, Robert. We look forward to your continued story. Have a good one. Um, Dan, makes me think I have to draw my next tattoo. Ooh. Can you draw tattoos, Dan? Hey Robert, thank you so much for the for that tip. It's awesome. You're my first one. Beautiful. So thankful for that.
Yeah, Dan, I definitely practiced with Procreate a little bit more, too. But I'm drawing in a little bit different style, too. I'm drawing, like, shape-based stuff with shadow shapes instead of line. Um, and uh, Tattoo Artist asked if you wanted to draw it. Yeah, no reference photo today. <clears throat> so I'm not sure what you meant. The tattoo asked me if I wanted to draw it. The tattooist. So tell me that story again. And how's your artwork going? Uh, Dan was studying with me for a while. A long while. He made amazing progress too. So give me an update about what's happening. Let me see if I can... Uh, work a little bit differently here. Grab something like a different brush. Fine charcoal, willow charcoal. Could that be it? No. Um, grainy rub. What about grainy rub? Okay, let's try grainy rub. <clears throat> I do love this iPad though. It's awesome for getting that realistic look. The show. Important. You keep studying, right?
Last Friday, I gave my first course on an exercise you gave me. Oh, cool. Working and learning mostly alone, Dan is saying. Joined a drawing club for this year where I live. Okay, cool. Perspective without any kind of vanishing point, and then four, two, three, five, one method for values. Yeah, so I taught Dan kind of a block in method that was for values on how to kind of handle values and a simple kind of five value system. And I think it was helpful, right? So you kind of block in the values and uh, there's a certain order that you do it that's helpful. And it's kind of a four, two, three, five, one. Put in the value number four and then your value number two. So your dark and your light local kind of local value stuff and then you build it up from there it really works good for portraits because portraits are full of, you know, organic things that aren't so clear, you know, and anything that helps with clarity and structure, you know, and value is really, really helpful. Yeah, you know, the the reference, it's a little, you know, tough because I can't really show this reference on YouTube. And, uh, you know, I think they'll demonetize me or that kind of stuff. We didn't, I taught older people, one told me. Dan says, we didn't see where you lead us, now the drawing is cool. Okay, well that's good. I hope that's good. <laughs> this pose is really curled up and a little complicated.
Got to control those values. Yeah, so last time, or a couple times ago, I was kind of drawing, showing how to block in with simple primitive shapes and using balls, boxes, and tubes. And this time I'm drawing more with shadow shapes. So it's kind of, you know, I draw with a combination of that kind of block in like gesture construction first and then start to bring in the values but today I'm starting with values um, and that's why it's maybe kind of different a little bit Here to draw with charcoal on paper because of the range of motion that I can get with my arm and my wrist together and I can move the paper and I can kind of move my body and it's harder to do the iPad. Thank you. 
All right, well, that one took a while. Really needed to concentrate for that. Like I said, it's... The iPad's so slippery. Um, I need to get one of those paper light things, right? Or paper like things that makes the surface feel like paper. like this one Dan thank you I'm kind of surprised it came out it's so so darn complex and and uh, curled up and stuff you know So we've been going for about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I want to keep going. Because I just can't get enough. Let's take a look at Take a little break and see what we've done so far. Or should we put this one in the middle? Okay, so this one. Oops. I like putting them up like this because then I get a chance to like practice composing stuff, right? Just composing things on a page. And uh, that helps my art. It does. Instead of just isolated figures. fun to have them kind of interact a little bit. And then the drawings get better as you go. You know, the first ones, you kind of warm up and they, you know, they range from good to really sucky. And then as you get going, your drawings get better throughout the day. And so, um, you know, just be patient with yourself. Don't push yourself too hard or be too critical. Come back like now and then you can assess the work and you can be a little bit critical and that's okay. But while you're doing it, doing the drawings, just maintain that positive frame of mind and that is really helpful. Because if you get too critical at the, you know, at the outset, it can kind of dampen your enthusiasm. 
and you don't want that, you know. Six or so. Six or seven. Dan says, maybe because you are a bit strong. Is that a good thing? I may be a bit strong. Okay, good. Well, maybe we'll call it for today. And thank you so much, you guys. Uh, if you're new to the channel, remember to like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you know when I go live or put out new content uh, leave a comment that helps the algorithm push it out there for YouTube and uh, if you want to join the discord and join a community of artists artists getting better and supportive supporting each other then the link will be in the description for that for the discord server and if you want to study portrait drawing then head over to Draw Juice. I'm running a sale right now for uh, Black Friday, 20% off everything in the store. Okay, so you guys, thanks once again. We'll see you. I'm going live tomorrow night. Or No, actually not tomorrow night. It's a new time. I had to change the time due to scheduling. So it's at 8 a.m. Wednesdays instead of 7 p.m. Wednesdays. So it's kind of a big change there, but that's the way it is so tune in and i'll be doing some lessons some drawings critiquing work for my students and stuff like that so you guys thanks a lot again and we'll see you next time i am over and out thanks dan for being here uh thank you robert and uh, thomas and uh, justin Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.